Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial. This time we're gonna go back to the subject of OwnCloud. Last time I showed in my short tutorial how to install OwnCloud and how to configure some security features. Uh, today I'm gonna show some more additional stuff that you can actually configure uh, at your own cloud. So let's uh, get to it. So first of all, I'm gonna pull up here Firefox, so I'll be able to log into my own cloud. Okay, so here's our <coughs> here's our main site for logging in. So first of all, let's start with um, basic stuff. I have my PowerShell open here, and I'm logged in to my server. So first of all, maybe let's open a var www uh, on cloud so we're gonna work here mainly with the files that are here uh, and we're gonna now open ourselves config uh, PHP so uh, maybe I will I will just uh, go to uh, um, or maybe I'm gonna stay at this place and we're just gonna open through nano var www on cloud config config.php. We're opening the main config file for our own cloud. As you can see, there is not much configured to be honest here. Um, so, just basic stuff, I think. <coughs> A little bit of addition a little bit of things maybe added <coughs> so let's start from the beginning first thing so um if we would like to actually because uh, uh, if we would like to configure um, parameter to specify the base url for any urls which are generated with own cloud using any kind of uh, command line tools, cron or uh, OCC. And then, uh, if we, we would like to actually do a rewrite, uh, we have to add specific line to our configuration, which is called and let's put this line here. I'm just gonna maybe do it under update uh, checker. Gonna add it, and the line is called ht access rewrite base. <coughs> okay, so that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna change, because at the moment we have our IP address we have uh, index.php and then we have login. So um, let's just save it. Now to apply the configuration, we will need to do the following command, which is sudo minus u, so user ww minus data so the main data user that is specified for own cloud php now var ww own cloud occ maintenance update ht access so when we we can actually do it but first i will need to install sudo here because i think i don't have it just a sec I pull the install. Okay, now let's uh, 
Okay, now let's do, of course, this update. <coughs> so as you can see, .ht access has been updated. Now we need to just restart our Apache. Let's restart the Apache. And now let's, of course, pull up our site. Let's, <coughs> sorry, let's change it. As you can see, the PHP index has disappeared. Now we only have specified our uh, we have specified only our IP address and the main log uh, and the main um, login addition, as you can call it. So um, it's basically pointing to the login. There is no more index.php. Uh, all right, next thing would be good to do because um, now when we actually let's change it to HTTP. So let's change that. As you can see, I can open it as HTTP and then I'm not secured, of course, because I would have to then put here HTTPS and then everything is secured because the own cloud has a self signed certificate that I've created or we have generated in a previous video so um, it's not good we would like to uh, every time we are opening own cloud to redirect redirect everything to https so we won't have to deal with that anymore so let's close that for a moment of course let's open again our main config file so we're gonna do um, override protocol this time so we have to add another line in our configuration so again uh, under the update checker i'm just gonna add another line and then i'm just gonna paste override protocol and https now i'm gonna save everything again i'm gonna clear that of course, again, we have to update the HTT access file. So again, updating everything, again, restarting Apache. Now let's pull up our, our own cloud. I'm just going to open a new window. And now I'm just going to write here. Maybe I'm just before that, I'm just going to uh, clear everything out. So we won't have any residue in our cookies or anything else so let's clear everything okay and uh, yeah fine let's now open let's put http dot slash and the IP address of our own cloud instance and as you can see, we are automatically redirected to HTTPS, so everything is working as it should be. Okay, so <clears throat> we got this covered. Next thing, uh, actually, So we can now check maybe um, a URL, URL that own cloud should use to look for updates. So I think that's going to be also quite handy to have. So let's open our config file. We're going to go update checker. And I'm going to change that to true true and then under this again one line and we're gonna add now another line here so check for working HTTPS HTT access uh, what does that do actually um, this is a crucial security check on Apache server that should always be set to true this verifies that the .ht access file is writable and works. So we're gonna add this, and on uh, I think on top of this, we're gonna add our update URL. So our update URL is gonna look like this. So it's gonna be update.server.url, and here is the on cloud server that pulls all the updates 
out of the internet. So we're just gonna edit that. Right, so we have this configured. <coughs> Another quite handy thing is uh, the, to check if own cloud is connected to the internet or running in a closed network. So for that, we will need to add another line here. And let's add has internet connection true. So it's going to be checking if everything is connected like it should be. Uh, check uh, an app before install whether it uses private IPS instead of the proper public IPS. If this is set to true, it will only allow to install or enable apps that pass the check. I think I should use that as well in my configuration. If you want, you can use it. If not, then you can skip it. But I think I will use it. I will just put it up here and it's gonna be app mm, code checker. App code checker to true. So basically app applications that are gonna be installed on the own cloud instance are gonna be checked before installment. Uh, right now I think we can uh, do something with our logs so <coughs> we can specify the path to our own cloud logs. Of course we can change it if you would like to change the path to your logs. This is the way to do it so mm, Let's maybe do it under working HTT access. Just gonna put it here. So log file. This is the default path, which is var log on cloud.log. You can always change it here if you would like. To. Under this, we can uh, actually configure also the log rotation, which is quite handy to be honest because you, you don't want your logs to be stacking up and taking a lot of place um, on your server so my suggestion is that you actually use this log rotation configuration just to put as much as you can in one log file then maybe copy it or just have a cron job that copies it to some other uh, instance Mm, and then after this safe update of your uh, safe backup of your log you can create a new log so thanks to this option it will automatically the log will be automatically um, scratched from your server on cloud uh, instance and then of course a new log file will be created um, the thing is that the log is going to be scratched when it reaches a certain point of data in it. So if you have it set to, let's say, 100 megs, then when the log reaches 100 megs, it's going to be scratched from the server and another log is going to be created and it's going to be created and, uh, how to say, published, maybe not published, uh, all this stuff that is being, being logged and happens on the system is going to go to the log and it's going to be, uh, how to say it, well, um, taking space maybe or something like that. Uh, as long as it reaches 100 megs, it's fine. When it reaches this point, it's a breaking point. It's the end of the road for the log. New one is created. So. Base, the base basically to <clears throat> configure this you will need to actually maybe under this log file we're gonna add another line which is log rotate size here we need to specify the size remember that the size is specified not in megabytes it's specified in bytes so to actually um, do a, do a calculation of this uh, I'm gonna specify it for a hundred megs so um, if you would like to actually specify it for hundred megs and I'm and I also need to change this because it's in bytes so that's gonna be this this many bytes uh, how to actually um, calculate how many bytes are 
is it? Well, it's uh, fairly simple because it's uh, 100 megs, 100 MBs uh, equals a hundred. Uh, then you need to multiply it by 1024 and then you need to multiply it again by 1024 bytes and you have a hundred megs and this is uh, the calculation in bytes so basically that's how it looks I'm gonna leave it as that <clears throat> so if a rotated uh, log file is already present it will be overwritten Right, uh, another very handy option, of course, in own cloud when you're gonna do, do any maintenance of your server, it is good to, of course, uh, shut everything off so nobody's using the server uh, uh, when you're doing the maintenance. So, very easy thing to add here in the configuration file to do it. Uh, so, we're gonna add here another line which is maintenance false. Maintenance false. If you true, if you <clears throat> change this to true, at this moment, as you can see, we have the own cloud possibility to log in. I'm just gonna refresh it. Everything is fine. When we change this maintenance to true, the maintenance should be activated. We just need to, of course, update everything. No app has been loaded. On cloud is in maintenance mode. As you can see, now I'm just gonna also restore the Apache once again, open it, I'm gonna restart, and you can see here is the uh, opening site with the information that says that the maintenance is being proceeded uh, on this server. So when we go back here, open again the file. And we're gonna change that to false. Everything should go back to as it was <coughs> previously. Right, just a quick <coughs> update and then again restart. And then we can just, as you can see, our site is back. Okay, so very handy stuff. And uh, so, uh, right. <coughs> So, just a reminder, if you want to prevent users from logging into your own cloud before you start doing some maintenance work, you need to set the value of the maintenance parameter to true. Please keep in mind that users who are already logged in are kicked out of uh, own cloud instantly. <clears throat> and also we can specify another thing in our configuration which also is connected to the maintenance so maybe we'll go here under our maintenance we're just gonna do another line we can specify something called a uh, single user single user when set to true the on cloud instance will be unavailable for all users who are not in the admin group so let's just change this to true of course so now no user from the user group should be able to connect to own cloud let's restart the apache i'm gonna open this up i'm gonna open up my admin account let's log into the admin account let's check our users we have only one user here I'm just gonna change his password here. All right, now let's log out and let's try to log in as this user. As you can see, we cannot log in because maintenance is being performed that's our screen so everything works fine 
Ok. <coughs> I'm just gonna again go here because the cookies have been remembered again. So let's do this. Now opening on cloud login. Okay, so this is basically how it works. Now let's go back to um, uh, my PowerShell. I'm just gonna go to the config file and I'm gonna set this single user to false for now because I'm gonna need to log into the user account to show you other things okay so maybe save it and just reload the service right uh, another thing that we can actually um, have a look upon is our tem temp directory so override um, where on cloud stores temporary files of course is the, the, the place where on cloud stores temporary files useful in situations where the system temporary directory is on a limited space RAM disk or is otherwise restricted or is or if external storages uh, which do not support a streaming are in use so basically to configure this let's open our file let's go down here maybe under the update checker maybe even here another line and we can add the temp directory specification which is this and this is our temp directory you can of course change the directory if you would like to i'm just gonna save it again restart the apache service mm, another thing that you can configure is um, hashing cost what is that well the hashing cost used by hashes generated by on cloud using a higher value requires more time and cpu power to calculate the hashes well it's a little bit of a my think it's a little bit of a security feature if you can call it that uh, I'm gonna put it here and it looks like this hashing cost hashing cost uh, I'm gonna leave it at default 10 I'm gonna change it to 20 because the more the bigger number you put here the more of course uh, power your CPU is gonna use uh, your CPU or CPUs of course so depending how you want to how you want to to work how you want it to work okay let's uh, save it right uh, okay so um, maybe one more thing that I've actually didn't cover and I could hmm Uh, I think I could also show some stuff regarding proxy uh, proxy servers if you have a proxy server and if you would like to uh, put some uh, configuration with the proxy here to your own cloud or just put your own cloud to a proxy server this is what you should configure let's just open our config file again okay so basically what we will add here here regarding uh, the proxy we will add another line of course maybe let's go somewhere down here under the integrity check and let's just add here so proxy here you can add your proxy IP number if you have a proxy server and of course under this we can add another line which is going to be used proxy user password so user password so here optional authentication for the proxy to use to connect to the internet so if you have a proxy server you can specify here of course the password for the server so you can gain the actual internet connection 
um, just in case I'm gonna show here how it looks in the proxy section if you would like to specify some proxy let's say this is the proxy proxy example.com with just the port here of course I think IP address only would be also sufficient enough if you uh, would need it of course I also wanted to show you one more thing if it goes to rewrite base the one that we did previously so let's go to it uh, rewrite base HTTX is rewrite base for this thing to actually work so <clears throat> if you want to get rid of the, this PHP index.php for this to work you need to have two things installed uh, mod rewrite needs to be installed on your server and mod env is, is needed to be installed as well if you don't have those two packages installed or those two modules installed on the server this option will not work bear that in mind all right so um, maybe one more thing and we're gonna proceed to something else okay so maybe something a little bit uh, different now uh, maybe something additional um, if you are interested in uh, let's say um, adding some new theme to your own cloud you can also specify it by adding here the line theme and then of course the name of the theme it is being used <coughs> the de default location for the themes is on cloud slash themes uh, okay so another thing that you can actually change and modify it's at another line we can specify it's a shared folder defining a default folder for shared files folders other than root so basically here's how it looks a share underscore folder then you can specify the path to the shared folder if you have one set up another thing that you can actually use is a blacklist you can blacklist specific files um, and this allow the upload of course of those files to your server so you can do it of course with the array so you can have a table specified for this kind of things um, I'm just gonna to be honest I, I think I didn't have that much success with this um, let's say exclude directories we have an array here and here is like well that snapshot or uh, well this is quickly thing and snapshot i think i'm just gonna change it for now for J jpeg and we're gonna see if it actually works let's see jpeg jpeg and we're gonna see if i can actually add a jpeg right now to my server so let's just of course save everything, restart Apache, let's log into our user account. User account. Okay. I have a bogus JPEG, JPEG uh, file here that I can actually use. So in a moment i'm gonna see if it works or not there we go we have a jpeg here test jpeg let's see as you can see it works i can still put it here so something is uh, not right there because it should be blocked should be blocked uh, okay well it's basically exclude directories so maybe it's about a directory folder uh, let's then call a folder uh, well 
gonna see if I'm just gonna call a folder JPEG. I'm gonna try to put the folder with the file inside. If that's gonna be stopped or not. So maybe I'm re reading it wrong because it's directories, not files. Let's put the folder. Nope, doesn't matter. Folder goes in as well. So, well, like I said, I've tried it, but I had a little too much success about it. There is other way to block different things. I'm gonna show you. Okay, I guess I lost connection for a moment with my internet. Just a second. So going back here to uh, actually our okay uh, configuration uh, exclude directories. Um, to be honest, this is to be checked because uh, it's like I said. It's a little bit different probably something here probably is different a little bit different specification uh, well we also can blacklist files at, at least that's what is specified mm, in all the manuals we can use blacklisted files then we also can use an array in this case, we cannot um, we cannot uh, send a, a .htaccess file to our server. So blacklists uh, specific a specific file blacklist a specific file or files, and this allow the upload upload of files with this name. So basically, let's change this name. To something bogus again let's change it maybe to okay just a second there because I guess my internet connection is going nuts today yeah so disconnected from my server just a sec Again, <clears throat> I've tried this uh, blacklisted files. Mm, I also changed the one from HT access that is being uh, uh, given as a default to a JPEG, and I still could put the JPEGs on the server, so I guess that didn't work too much as well. Maybe some specific name. I don't know, maybe it's called some kind of in a specific kind of way. Maybe then it will block it. So I'm just gonna wait a moment and show. You. All right, so uh, let's do this uh, blacklist stuff now. Blacklisted files. Let's check it out. Uh, let's maybe specify it under the shared folder path. So maybe here. Let's add blacklisted files array, and I'm just gonna change this this to JPEG. JPEG. All right. Again, let's. Save. I'm gonna use, of course, sudo write and now just restart the service. There you go. And let's uh, check if we can actually put a JPEG. So let's 
let's open well maybe i'm gonna open just the, the usual user although it should be not allowed for the user and the admin at this time to be honest doesn't matter who logs in uh, okay let's pull up our file so the jpeg file test file there we go let's check it out well as you can see still it uploads still uploads i don't know i can try to maybe uh, download some kind of J jpeg from the internet i don't know if it would make any difference i think uh, if it doesn't work like that it doesn't work i can change uh, maybe this to txt let's see if, it, if it's gonna make any kind of difference here let's change that okay right now let's just save it reload Okay, let's open the, the site again, let's log in again, and let's put the text file here, well as you can see still you can put it here, so I haven't actually uh, checked that out yet, haven't had the time, but I think I will uh, check it out maybe later on if I can mangle and tangle with it a little bit but for now I'm just gonna show you a different way that you can block your files so just let's log in as a administrator Yes, I will have to um, scratch the cookies or the okay fine and again open this right. Okay, so we're back in here. Uh, now let's go to files. We're gonna go to market. Okay, so as you can see, we had some kind of issue there. If it goes to apps, then we need to open our configuration file. Let's open the app. And we maybe we can now do the app checker for now for false. False, we're gonna check this out as false. Let's update now. Let's restart. And we're gonna now go to files again and our market. So again, something here, let's check it again then. Uh, proxy, proxy, do we have anything with the proxies here? Okay, so we're gonna leave our configuration for now. I'm just gonna go to another subject which is of course uh, securing your own cloud with using some uh, stuff like apps that you can install 
from the server, on cloud server. So let's just log in as uh, administrator for our own cloud instance. Let's go to settings and uh, let's go here to general for a moment just to check if everything's fine here all the checks are passed okay fine let's go to our market so we have here our market we can go to security tab and here we have things like file file firewall so let's install the firewall let's go to settings <coughs> Of course, it's a part of uh, enterprise, cloud, uh, on cloud enterprise. So let's go to security tab. I'm gonna just pull it off. So file firewall. Uh, what we can actually configure here? We can configure here uh, quite a lot of different things. Uh, one of them is um, actually trying to block stuff that people can send to our uh, own cloud server or to their accounts so particular things like let's say mp3s uh, 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 x files uh, rv files like video files um, different uh, different kind of php files maybe msi files uh, well let's try to configure some so maybe we'll just choose the default group as user users maybe users we're gonna call it users and here we have stuff like file mime type upload so we choose this we can change here is is not begins with does doesn't begin with ends with <coughs> and doesn't end with so i'm gonna um, change ends with and i'm gonna or maybe for now, I'm just gonna uh, uh, leave it at is, and let's uh, configure. Uh, maybe let's try PHP files. So we want to block PHP files. So we're gonna put here application x PHP, and uh, we're gonna change that uh, all requests save rules now just let's log out we're gonna log into our user um, actually i need to probably change I think I will just change for a moment the user password here. Alright, <clears throat> let's log out. <coughs> log into as a user. Okay. And now uh, let's try to put the PHP file here. So I'm just gonna create a bogus PHP file. <coughs> okay, let's. As you can see, access to the resource has been forbidden by the firewall rule. So everything works as it should. Um, I cannot uplo upload any file php files right now let's try the administrator account administrator account let's try the same thing test file nope firewall rule so basically this rule applies to all the users if we would like to change it let's try to change that let's go to security tab uh, maybe first i'm gonna delete this add a rule and uh, let's change user group is user 
and then add a rule and we're gonna choose main type is and here we're gonna specify the PHP type so <coughs> okay and all requests with the rule I'm gonna log out again let's do the test now um, let's log in as a user so the user php file cannot be uploaded works let's go out let's try the administrator okay php file was uploaded successfully so it it works only right now for the user group because that's how it's been specified so <clears throat> this is only one example of files php files we can of course specify it for different kind of files let's say i would like to specify it for msi file if it goes to MSI file, we just need to change this to application X MSI. If you would like to change it to, let's say, MP4, you want to block all the MP4s, then we will change this <coughs> to video MP4. Let's save the rule. Let's try it out. Let's log out. Now let's log in as a user. I'm gonna just change my extension here to mp4 of the file test file it has it has been blocked <clears throat> now let's log out login as administrator again and let's check uh, mp4 file goes in all right, so that's basically how it is. So MP, MP4s, um, the same thing goes, of course, if you would like to block. Let's say security, we want to block right now, XF files. So executable files, then we will need to change this into this so basically you need to write here application slash x dash ms dash dos dash executable and then save the rule x files let's do this one more test okay changing to the user I'm gonna change the extension of my file. Hex the file has been blocked. So everything works perfectly. Uh, you can block all the files as you wish regarding what kind of group uses what. Uh, <clears throat> so that's how you configure that unfortunately like I showed you in the config file this setting regarding the uh, the blocking of files where you use the array and you specify the blacklist uh, well I don't know it didn't work for me if somebody knows a way out out of this it's great i didn't find it so maybe maybe it's simple maybe it isn't i don't know i used the firewall in this case um, probably you can also configure it so it works all right so maybe let's go back to the firewall again um, what else what else we can actually set up here we can of course specify uh, another rule 
because remember this is one roll if you put too many things here there uh, there is a possibility if i added the rules here it's quite big possibility that this won't work because the firewall checks all the things one after another if something doesn't check your whole rule is scratched so basically if you added like let's say two more rules here to this configuration and one of them would be bogus then all of this is invalid and it won't work uh, right add a group let's say user group again users we can of course upload file size you can also mm, change this so you can basically uh, delete uh, this file this from the yeah let's do it like that file size upload and let's say it's gonna be uh, this file mm, less than well if you specify like uh, 10 meg megabytes 10 megabytes if it's less that then 10 megabytes it's gonna mm, be uploaded to the uh, to the server to the own cloud server um, yeah uh, if it's uh, oh, sorry i guess it was scratched for a moment here Uh, yeah, so as, as I was saying, uh, if, it's, uh, <clears throat> if it's less than 10 megabytes, it's going to be uploaded to your server. If it's uh, more than 10 megabytes, it's going to be uh, stopped by the fire or firewall rule. I'm going to show that in a moment. Right, so let's just uh, do here again users. We're gonna do here um, file size upload and we're gonna do um, greater than uh, let's say 3 GB. And we're gonna see if that works. We're gonna set it up like that. So greater, greater than 3 gigabytes. <coughs> Well, maybe I'm just gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay on my user account, <coughs> admin account. Sorry, now I'm go I have here a test MP3, MP4 that has uh, above three gigs. So let's see. <coughs> Three minutes, two minutes. We're gonna see in a moment when it finishes if it if if it's gonna stop the file from being sent to the server. Okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, oh, okay, I cannot. So we have to wait till it actually finishes. So you can, of course, configure uh, different things here on the firewall. You can also configure an IP range. range. Put some uh, uh, file tags. If you have a file, let's say this file, and you tag it, because if you have here details, you have here tags, you can here um, put some kind of tag, let's say uh, confidential. If you put a tag like this, confidential, you can also create a, a firewall rule for this, uh, this tag, confidential, and then um, 
all the um, files with the confidential tag. Uh, well, this example blocks access to any folder with the um, tag confidential from outside access, right? So if we would have uh, not a file but a folder, let's say this folder would be called confidential, it has some kind of files, then if you set up a specific rule on the <coughs> firewall, first you, you choose the system file tag, put the file name a tag, it's confidential, then you uh, choose the IP range, IPv4, and you change the uh, you choose the whole range. Uh, let's say your uh, all subnet that you have specific you specify the whole subnet, and then of course uh, it won't those uh, particular folders that have this confidential uh, tag uh, on them. They cannot be accessed. <coughs> oh, so as you can see, the fire rule works. Access to the resource has been forbidden by the firewall rule. So, if we go back to our settings and we go back to our security, now we have this greater than 3 gigs. If we have that less than 3 gigs, it would pass and our 3 gigs uh, would jump onto our server. So, that's one rule. The other rule I wanted to show. Also, let's say it's user group. I'm gonna add a rule, and here we're gonna choose um, system file tag is confidential. So let's say this confidential file tag. Add a rule again. We're gonna choose uh, this time client IP subnet is, and here we're gonna specify the subnet. In my case, the subnet is. Let's say something like that with the 24 mask. And if I apply this, like I said, all the folders with the confidential in them, they would, wouldn't be accessible from outside. So that's another rule that you can specify. Um, there is uh, something else that you can actually use. Let's say you would like to actually uh, limit access for users in certain hours. So if you would like to specify it for, let's say we specify it for the user group and for users, we add a rule that we need to choose a requested time. The time is between. And we set the time here, let's say it's going to be between 8 a.m. and I don't know, let's say, uh, I don't know, 8 p.m., right? So between this time frame, people from the user group won't be able to access your own cloud. So this is another rule that you can actually use in practice. Um, other thing that you can specify is uh, blocking certain groups from ent entering uh, your own cloud from like uh, um, certain ranges, IP range, let's say. So, like uh, preventing members from a certain group to access the, the web UE from the IP addresses uh, that uh, are outside the uh, local network. So only people working in your environment can enter it from your subnet. If somebody tries to enter the resource from outside, from their home, it won't be available. How to set it up? Well, first of all, we need to specify, of course, again, the user group. This time is, of course, users at my... Um, at my test here. Uh, now we can specify the range because we're gonna need IP range. So for this I'm gonna use a uh, client IP subnet and here we choose is not and we can choose the subnet. So let's say this is gonna be my subnet 
So if I apply this rule, the people from the user group won't be able to log into their own clouds from outside the business or a working place. They only will be allowed to log in from the work space, work, working place. <coughs> okay, so this is, if it goes to the file, a uh, file, firewall rule, I think those few rules are like the basic rules. There is quite a lot of stuff that you can actually pick here. It's uh, like regular expressions, uh, request type. Share links, web devs, um, uh, request time file, file uh, user agent, uh, user device, so you can block uh, people from logging in from s different devices. If somebody has an Android device and wants to log into his own cloud from the Android client, you can block it here for certain user groups again. So you just specify first the user group, then you specify the user device that is going to be going to be blocked. It's either Android, iOS, desktop client or others. Maybe browsers, you can of course also specify the browsers that are going to be blocked for users in this particular group. Right, so let's go back to our market. We have also a uh, two-factor authentication here that we can use. Uh, maybe I'm just going to go to security tab. <clears throat> we have, of course, passwords, which is very useful. Password policy, I think you should have it as well. If we go to settings and security. Settings and security, you can see this is the password expiration policy. You can specify your passwords, how they should look, how long they can be. Uh, do you use lower or upper cases, numbers in a password, special characters, restrict restrict the, um, to these special characters. You can use this as well. How long the passwords were last. Uh, when's the expiration date? Public link expir expiration policy. When the link sucks, you're gonna expire. So that's another feature for your own cloud to use for securing. Right. Um, so I think I will stop here because that's uh, quite a lot of different things I've talked about if it goes to applications on own, own cloud there is quite a lot of them like I said you can use two-way authentication you can use uh, different apps for securing of course you should use um, any brute force uh, protection that you if you can um, install something that will also protect you from this um, also uh, ransomware protection don't, don't forget about installing that on your own cloud instance all of those things are um, available in the app store in the um, in the um, in the in the app store in the security tab so you can <coughs> go there and install all of them like I said there is also the antivirus that you can install that you can check um, different files uh, I will actually see if I'm able to I'm just gonna go to security once again Factory passwords, uh, auto, uh, uh, all out to this uh, ransomware. Of course, this needs to be installed as well. Ransomware protection. Um, let's say what else do we have here? That's all storage. I need 
security let's uh, to factory authentication we can also install this if needed mm, antivirus so we can install the antivirus as well so of course clam av because it's based uh, on linux it's debian course let's open now this let's go to I don't know if we can uh, check it up here let's go to settings maybe security tab we have here the antivirus configuration mode executables we can change that if we want to to different kind of options Fortinet McAfee path to clam uh, uh, clam scan configuration extra command line options strange length we can change that as well file size minus one means no limit okay so password of course protection encryption if you want to enable server side encryption of course you are being here notified about the encryption um, it is always good to create regular backups of your data if it goes to backups you can always open the market and here I think um, let's say storage customization yes we can customize install a wallpaper wallpaper if we want to what do we have here and Enter enterprise team if you want you can install that as well let's go to storage um, okay maybe security we're gonna check if we have of course we have like brute force protection install that as well this is also required tools let's see tools there's quite a lot of stuff in the tools you can actually of course use as well mm, what do we have here probably checksums yeah that can be installed as well the checksums tools diagnostics yeah diagnostics is quite okay as well we're gonna use that diagnostics tools um, text metadata extraction if you want to extract your files in the own cloud okay. full text search yeah that's the feature should be also chosen chosen sorry automation auto, automation deck auto automation right okay uh, workflow file <clears throat> what do we have file lifecycle management collaboration integration Mm, multimedia, productivity, okay, updates, let's see, updates, as you can see, there is an update pending here, mm, there is also, let's see, what's this, license, enterprise license key, Announcement centers and there is of course next the backup tool that's going to be installed as well so use the app at your own risk that I lost may occur yeah, well I know this app is no replacement for a more professional backup solution well of course it isn't but still you can use it and it's also quite handy settings so we have our diagnostics here 
which we can actually configure what to log, everything, diagnostic log. If we go to our security tab, let's do the storage tab, general tab. In the general tab, now we should have a little bit more things. Uh, no, that's the same, okay. So maybe that's the search because we actually installed additional search options. Here is our sharing tab. So all the things con you can configure regarding sharing files. Some tips, additional, let's see, additional, next backup, here's, a, here's our next backup, your backups if you go here, so create a backup, are you sure you want to create a new backup, yes, backup has been created, and here is our backup, if we do this, we pick our backup, and now restore the tables, we, we have to pick which tables we want to restore from this backup, of course, if we open this, and uh, we choose this option we have all of the tables and we can restore the tables here so that's how it looks basically right so i think uh, i've covered a little bit of additional stuff regarding own cloud like i said if it goes to different tags you can find them here to configure your firewall check some something we actually also installed versions sharing activities pretty basic stuff nothing really very i think uh, complicated if it goes to the trash bin and deleted files uh, you can also configure that in the config file how the trash bin should actually work is it supposed to automatically uh, delete the files or do do they have to be deleted in a certain amount of time so you can configure that as well in the in config.php uh, file uh, what else i could say about it well, i think that's all basically that i wanted to show nothing i think else is to be said about it right now if i remember something i will add it to maybe another video i will just maybe open briefly my configuration file and i will show you so the mm, parameters so if you want to configure your trash bin you can add here file sorry not a file the expression called trash bin retention obligation auto auto uh, default setting keeps files and folders in the trash bin for 30 days so if you have auto configured have your files in the trash bin for 30 days and automatically deletes any time after that if space is needed you can configure the uh, d and auto so you can uh, do something like this i will show you in a moment you can configure it like that keeps files and fol folders in the trash bin for d plus days delete any time if space needed yeah so it can be also disabled of course so you can specify here the number of days 
that you want to keep the files in the trash bin so let's, let's say like I don't know 60 for example right okay right so I think that's it for my own cloud configuration again thanks for watching please like subscribe if you like what you saw here if it's helpful to you if you consider helping out my channel you can always consider being one of the patreons you can go to my patreon page okay thanks again and 